Greetings, my fellow Middle-earth enthusiasts. Today, ask the question, did Gandalf the Grey, our wise and revered wizard, commit a theft that has gone unnoticed for far too long? Sit back as we go on a journey to unravel what might be one of Middle-earth's most daring heists. We must venture into the origins of this theory, for in these overlooked details, we might just uncover the shocking truth about Gandalf's involvement in a crime that could rewrite the history of Gondor itself. Did Gandalf steal Gondor's greatest treasure? Let's find out. Our journey begins in the year 3019 of the Third Age, shortly after the glorious coronation of Aragorn, our brave and rightful king of Gondor and Arnor. Yet, in the dead of night, Gandalf spirited Aragorn away from the very heart of his kingdom. Through ancient paths that had been trodden by kings of old and long forgotten, Gandalf led Aragorn high into the very heart of Mount Mindolwin. They ventured where few had tread, reaching dizzying heights above the city. High above Minas Tirith, they paused in a clearing. Oh, what a view they must have beheld, Aragorn, surveying his new kingdom his subjects below unaware of this clandestine rendezvous. But why this covert meeting? What secret treasures or forbidden knowledge did Gandalf share with our beloved king? Gandalf stood beside Aragorn, delivering words of destiny and purpose. The Age of Men had dawned, and Aragorn was its herald. But Aragorn, our valiant yet humble king, was not without doubts. He questioned his role and the future of his realm, a burning concern plagued his heart, as he was yet to be joined in Minas Tirith by Arwen, his beloved. He was destined to die, and who then would rule his kingdom? As you may recall, Elrond, the wise and ancient elf lord, had imposed a condition on Aragorn. Arwen's hand in marriage would only be granted to Aragorn upon his rightful ascension to the throne, uniting Gondor and Arnor. In that moment, Gandalf, the keeper of ancient wisdom, offered Aragorn guidance. Turn your face from the green world and look where all seems barren and cold, said Gandalf. And as Aragorn turned and followed a stony path, his eyes fell upon a sight that defied explanation. A sapling of the white tree of Gondor. A young, vibrant symbol of hope and renewal. Then Aragorn cried, I have found it. Lo, here is a scion of the eldest of trees. But how comes it here? For it is not itself yet seven years old. With unwavering resolve, Aragorn planted this living emblem of Gondor's legacy in the very soil that cradled the withered remains of its predecessor. The white tree, once fading, now thrived anew. In that profound moment, Aragorn's heart swelled with confidence. He had become the king he was destined to be and the sapling bore witness to his worthiness. It was a sign that Arwen would soon stand by his side as his queen. The withered tree found its final resting place in Wraith Dynan, the hallowed tomb of kings, surrounded by the echoes of those who had come before. Now, fellow seekers of truth, prepare yourselves as we delve into the heart of this accusation against Gandalf the Grey. The crime, my friends lies in the theft of Gondor's greatest treasure, the fruit of the White Tree itself. It is believed that Gandalf, our trusted wizard, might have committed this audacious act. Now, let us scrutinize the evidence at hand. The last White Tree perished in the year 2872 of the Third Age, coinciding with the passing of Belekthor II, steward of Gondor. It stood barren, devoid of fruit or sapling, to unravel this mystery, we must journey through time. When did this daring act transpire? Our first clue emerges in the year 2063, when Gandalf embarked on a perilous journey to Dol Guldur, driven by the growing shadow, only for Sauron to retreat. It wasn't until 400 years later, when the One Ring resurfaced in Middle-earth, that the White Council was first convened. And in the year 2850, Gandalf's quest led him back to the shadowed halls of Dol Guldur, where he discovered the Dark Lord Sauron was gathering all rings and seeking news of the One Ring, as well as news of Isildur's heir. The following year, the White Council convened again, torn by differing opinions. Gandalf advocated for an assault on Dol Guldur, 
recognizing the growing peril of Sauron's might. But Saruman, the White Wizard, swayed by his lust for power and misguided ambitions, refused to act. Instead, he embarked on a hopeless quest to locate the One Ring in the Gladden Fields. From that moment, Gandalf, wise and far-seeing, perceived the looming threat of Sauron and his malevolent gaze fixed upon Gondor. He knew the fate of the White Tree was intertwined with the fate of Middle-earth. It is during this twenty-year period between the meeting of the Council and the death of Belakthor II that Gandalf might have executed his audacious plan. How he accomplished this daring feat remains a tantalizing mystery. Did he distract the vigilant guards with a spectacular fireworks display, intoxicate them with his notorious home-brewed concoctions, or perhaps stumbled into the tree while masquerading as a humble vagabond? Whatever the method, one thing is certain. Gandalf's motives were clear. His disregard for the stewards of Gondor is well documented, making him a prime suspect in this audacious theft. As the pieces of this intricate puzzle fall into place, another enigma presents itself. Aragorn's assertion that the sapling is no older than seven years introduces a new element. If we consider that, the fruit must have begun growing sometime after the year 3012, seven years prior to its discovery, it leads us to a critical realization. What was our lead suspect doing during this time? Our journey then takes us back to the year 3001, the year of Bilbo's unexpected journey, when Gandalf was already harboring suspicions about the One Ring's existence. It was in this year that Gandalf embarked on the perilous quest to uncover the secrets of the One Ring, launching a relentless search for the elusive Gollum. However, the most intriguing revelation after over 50 years of friendship is the collaboration between Gandalf and Aragorn, starting from the year 3009. For the next eight years, their relentless pursuit of Gollum spanned the vales of Anduin, the depths of Mirkwood, the expanse of Rovanion, and even the treacherous confines of Mordor itself. But during this time, Sauron had taken hold of the creature who once possessed the One Ring. With the climax of the Third Age on the horizon, Gandalf, instrumental in the timing of reseating a rightful king to Gondor, seized the perfect moment. Sensing the impending storm, he sought the hidden mountain path, a secret known only to the ancient kings. He carefully planted the sapling of the white tree in a place of deep symbolism, far from the looming threat of Mordor, a strategic move that ensured the tree's survival when Gondor needed it most. What strikes me as most intriguing is Gandalf's lack of surprise when Aragorn discovered the tree and his knowledge of its growing habits. And Gandalf coming, looked at it, and said, Verily, this is a sapling of the line of Nimloth the Fair, and that was a seedling of Galathelion, and that a fruit of Telperion of many names, eldest of trees. Who shall say how it comes here in the appointed hour? But this is an ancient hallow, and ere the kings failed, or the tree withered in the court, a fruit must have been sent here. For it is said that, though the fruit of the tree comes seldom to ripeness, yet the life within may then lie sleeping through many long years, and none can foretell the time in which it will awake. He sounds like he knew that the fruit would grow even after hundreds of years sitting in his dusty pockets. He also seemed to possess prior knowledge of the mountain trail secrets and the exact location of the tree details that cannot be mere coincidence. Gandalf had both the opportunity and foresight to orchestrate the theft of the white tree's fruit and its subsequent planting. If you've relished this journey through the annals of Tolkien's world, don't forget to lend your support, like, and subscribe to stay connected with future revelations. Farewell, my fellow lore seekers. Krug, out.